Hey guys, in this video we're going to be making this rolling tyre on the beach animation. And how would you like 3 to 5 times faster cycles renders without needing to upgrade your graphics card? If you would, then check out Turbo Tools version 4, link in the description below. So we start off, we'll add Shift A, we'll go with a plane, and we'll scale this up a little bit, and then we'll scale it on the Y axis, and then we'll apply the scale. And then we'll go into edit mode. I'm going to do control R to make even size square faces. And then I'm going to select everything, right click, subdivide, and just press shift R a few times. So we've got plenty of resolution. And now I'm going to go into sculpt mode. I'm just going to make a, a mound for the tire to roll down. So now we'll add shift A, a torus and just position it in a place where it can fall down from. And I think I'll scale up the floor a bit as well. And then we're going to add a rigid body to the floor. We'll make sure this is passive so that it doesn't fall down. And we'll change it to mesh so that the rigid body can see the contours of the surface. And then for surface response, I'll set friction to 1, bounciness to 1, and sensitivity will change to 0 0.01 so that the tyre can get closer to it before it reacts. And then for this one, we'll do rigid body again, active. This time we'll change it to cylinder. Friction 1, we'll give it a little bit of bounciness, and collision margin 0 0.01. Let's play this back. Not the result I wanted, so I'll just tweak the rigid body world settings a little bit in the scene panel and give it a few more solver iterations, maybe 30. And we'll give this 30 as well. I'll just reset the simulation by turning split impulse on and off, and then play it back again. And that's a bit more stable. It's not yet bouncy enough though, so let's go back in here, and we'll turn the bounciness of the tire up a bit more. Let's just turn the simulation off and on, on and off rather. And I think we'll turn the speed up to two. And then I'll just tweak these bound settings a bit more. There we go. Next thing to do is bake that physics simulation so we don't lose it. We'll go to the scene tab. And we'll go down to the cache. Click bake. And now we've got that baked in. And what I want to do now is convert the bake into keyframes. Because the next bit won't work if we've got physics simulation on it. So we're going to object. We go into rigid body and I'll say bake to keyframe. I'll say OK. And now we can get rid of the rigid body should be gone on that. And on this one, we can get rid of that as well. Play it back. And now we've got the full animation as keyframes. So back to the physics tab for the floor. We'll click on dynamic paint. And this is going to be a canvas. So click add canvas. And then we're going to change this to displace. And then we're going to choose this. Dynamic paint. This time we're going to use a brush. Add brush. And let's play this back. Nothing's going to happen at the moment because the tyre isn't penetrating the floor. So we either need to scale up the tyre or raise the floor a little bit. So I'll just raise the floor up. And now the tube is penetrating sufficiently to leave a track. Next up, we'll set up the camera. So go into camera mode, press N. And we're going to go under view, lock camera to view, and then I'll just move the camera where I want it. Right click on this, shade smooth, and I'll give it a few subdivisions with control 2. That'll add a subdivision modifier. And for the floor, I want to make sure to choose shade smooth, and also I want to add a subdivision surface afterwards. I set that to 2. Play that back. And now we're getting a bit of a smooth result. Now we can do is start adding materials. I'm going to use a sand that I've downloaded from a website called cgbookcase.com and it's sandy gravel 01. And these are CC0, which means you can use them for whatever you want. So let's bring up the shader editor. I'll press home so we can see it all. And in the camera settings, let's change passive 2 so we can't see the sides. And we're going to change this to be a shader editor. I'm going to cycles. Choose the floor, add a new material. 
And then because I've got the Node Wrangler add-on installed, I can choose the principal BSDF, Control Shift T. I want this one, I want the height, normal, roughness. And I'll say OK. And that's going to automatically set this up for me. And I want to be able to see the displacement on here. So I'm going to go into the material, options, under settings, and I'll say instead of bump only, we'll have displacement and bump. And that'll give us a more realistic result. Come over here, I'm going to change the mid level to 0.8. I'll probably turn that scale down to 0.5, maybe 0.7. And to improve render speed, rather than using adaptive subdivision, I'm just going to increase the subdivision levels instead. So I'm going to set this to 3. Now I can see the texture is a little bit stretched on the Y axis of this plane, so I'm just going to scale that up on the mapping node's Y axis. And I'll just use the mapping node's location and rotation options just so that I can sort of hide any tiling. And then for the subdivision modifier, I'm going to set the levels for the viewport to 2 and the final render to 3 so we get a better result when render. But I'll leave the modifier turned off for speed. And next up, I want to add the background. So I'm going to add a plane. We'll do Shift A. I'm going to do a plane. So under the F9 options, I'm going to say align it to the view. And I'll just position it in place. And I want to apply an image to this. So I've actually downloaded from this website called Pexels. I went with this one here by en Engine or Engin Accurate. No idea how you pronounce that. Anyway, download that and then we'll click a new material for this. And under emission, we're going to drag in this movie file. We'll plug that into the emission. Set the strength to one. And we'll set the base color to black. Okay, now I want to invert this. I'm going to do Control T. I'm going to say invert it on the X axis, so negative one. And that's going to rotate it that way. Now, it doesn't matter too much about the placement of this because I'm going to modify this in composition afterwards anyway. So this should be reasonably good. It doesn't have to be perfect. It's just to get the effect of the reflections on the torus. So let's play this back. And I can see that the ocean isn't playing back properly. So I need to make sure that we set this to be at least the length of the animation that we want. And we'll turn on auto refresh and cyclic as well. So let's just see what frame am I on. 59. I'll play it back. Let's turn render off for now. So I want it to go to around about, let's say, frame 111. So I come in here. I'll set this now to 111 for the frame range. So I'll set this to 111 as well. And that'll make sure that the movie plays all the way through. Now, I don't want that to be renderable. I only want this to be used in the reflections and through the transmission that we're about to apply to the torus material. So what I'm going to do is come under the options in here, down to visibility, and we'll say I don't want it to be visible to the camera. And I also want to change this HDRI image because it's not casting a strong enough shadow into the depressed area of the ground. So let's come into the world mode. I'm going to change this HDRI to one that's got a stronger light. Probably this one looks quite good. That's got a very small, bright sun. So that should cast a decent shadow. Okay, and you can see now we're getting a nice, a really nice shadow on the ground there. Okay, so I don't want to see this in the render. So in the render settings, and under the film, I'm going to say transparent. So now we're only getting this bit that's going to be rendered, and the tire. We'll choose the torus, and we'll give it a material. I'm going to make this transmissive. I'm going to make it a reddish colour. And I'll turn the roughness down a bit, maybe to about here. And then to give it a bit more of a reflection, we're going to turn weight up under coat and I'll turn roughness right down to zero. So we're getting a nice clear coat reflection on there as well. I'm going to change the IOR coat to 1.6 so that those reflections are a bit more visible on the faces that are pointing towards the camera. The only thing left to do now is come into the camera settings and then we'll come down here. I want to turn on a bit of depth of field to hide the fact I'm a bit of a cheapskate only using a 2K texture. Some people say I'm tied to the shark's arse at 50 fathoms. So depth of field, we'll turn that on. I'm going to focus on the end part over there and I'll turn that down a bit until my miserly nature has been camouflaged. Now coming to the render settings, 
I'm going to set this to render out as an FFmpeg in the same folder as the blend file using the two forward slashes and then a new folder I'll call this tutorial render forward slash and then we'll call the file itself final.mp4 and I'm going to change the encoding from Matroska to MPEG4. But if you're not using Turbo Tools, choose an image sequence that has got a alpha channel like OpenEXR. Then you can use that in the compositor later on. We'll go to the render settings. And we'll turn on motion blur. Leave it at the default settings. And extremely importantly, so that we don't get any strange behavior on the texture when we render, we need to go into the scene panel and just make sure we delete the bake because when we made the physics simulation the plane was a bit lower so delete the bake let's go to the compositor now control s i'm using turbo tools so i'm going to use draft for the denoising mode and crap for the sample preset so that's 12 samples and i'm going to use enhanced texture so i get more realism on the sand i'll turn off prevent fireflies and i've got transmission so i'm going to turn that on as well We've also got pretty heavy depth of field, so I'll probably turn that on. Now I'll press render, making sure I've got the image editor open. Render animation. Oh, and actually, before we do that, we'll turn on, under performance in the render settings, persistent data, and that should save a little bit of time each frame because it won't have to recalculate that subdivision each time. Render animation. All right, so now we've got the render completed, what I'm going to do is bring in that backdrop video into the compositor. If you're not using Turbo Tools, then bring in your image sequence in replacement for this Turbo Tools cache node that I've got here, and then delete or mute the render layers node. And we're going to add Shift A, Alpha over. We'll drop this in here. We're going to put the foreground into the bottom socket. And now we need to get the video and put that into the top socket. I'll plug that into the top socket and now you can see we've got it in the background and if we add a viewer we can actually see just make it a little bit smaller the movie file resolution is actually much bigger than the render so all I'm going to do to fix that is shift a I'm going to put down a scale mode I'm going to set this to be the render size and now it's going to fit in now it's the wrong way around I want the waves to be coming this way we'll just duplicate this one I'm going to change this one to relative and on the X I'm going to change it to negative one so that's going to flip it around the other way and now I'm going to tweak the position of that backdrop so we'll add shift a s this time a transform I'm going to move it up on the Y axis a little bit I'm going to make sure I change this to be 111 frames as well so it matches and I'm going to turn on cyclic and under the turbo tool settings I'm going to change performance to frame dropping and now we can actually play this back right in the compositor's backdrop so let's just modify this sand color so that it matches up better with this one so i'm going to do shift a rgb curve node drop this in here and i'll just modify this now until it gets a, a more of a match with the sand on here All right, and the last thing I'm going to do is add some audio. So let's go over here to the video editor and I'll turn off view seconds because it always confuses me. And I'm going to drag in the audio file, which I've downloaded from freesound.org. And the one I've searched for is this one, Ocean Waves. Download that and now we can drag that in to the video editor. And I'll just say strip, transform, snap strips to current frame. So I've got my timeline on frame one and I'll turn on the display waveform so that I can actually see, just zoom in a bit, where those waves crash. And I'm going to bring in the video file as well into here. I'll do the same again. Strip, transform, strip to current frame. And now we can align the audio with the video. So let's play that. And it's actually aligned pretty well already. Let's go into the volume for this one, maybe turn it up a tad. And I suspect my microphone's not picking that up at all, but it is actually lined perfectly. I want to scale it up a little bit. So I'm going to go into strip, retiming, and we'll say retime strips. And now we're going to get these little dots at the end. 
I'll just scale that up a little bit and bring it this way. So that second wave crash doesn't happen during the animation. And very importantly, we must delete this now, the video, otherwise the 3D scene won't render. So just select that one and I'll press X to delete it. And then we'll go back to the compositor. Under the output, I'm going to modify this now so that we also enable audio. Change that to AAC. I don't want to overwrite my original render, so I'm going to change this to final with audio and graded. We'll zoom in a bit and have one last quick check, see if there's anything that could be improved. Seems all right. And you can see because we've used Turbo Tools as enhanced texture feature, even though we've been using a denoiser, we've retained all that fine detail in the textures to improve realism. So now I'm going to do is come down to the publishing section, click publish, and now we can watch in the viewer the animation being published out to that new MP4 file, including all the changes we've made in the compositor. And once that's finished, we can then view the animation and we should have audio. So that's the tutorial complete. I hope you've enjoyed it and I'll catch you in the next one. Oh, we should put a few seagulls in there now. Yeah?